Hey, everybody, Saturday, November 6, 2021, I'll be in New York attending a business networking event. The theme is casino night. I got a few other guys coming. I'm going to announce their names soon. So if you want to sit down with a few Reform Gangsters, please register at reformgangsters.com and reserve your seat at the table. We're going to have a real good time. We're going to tell some mob stories, have a few laughs and play some cards. I think he liked the old time gangster movies the best, like James Cagney, uh, John Garfield. He liked, um, he liked, uh, he liked silent movies too, believe it or not, because from when he was a little kid, but uh, he was very, he liked all kinds of movies and um, he liked old school gangster movies. And even when The Godfather came out, I remember when The Godfather first came out, um, he he didn't want, he didn't go see it in the beginning. Then one day he woke up and <clears throat> he woke up and he told me, come on, let's, um, let, I'm going to, let's go see this Godfather. And he, he went like in the day and he snuck in some movie theater. He didn't want anybody to know he was going to go see it. And I went with him and uh, his Godson Joe, my cousin Little Joe, and a friend of mine, Sal Pecchio, and the three of us took him to see The Godfather, and we went to see a matinee. And uh, we went into the theater, it was empty, we watched the movie. Then after the movie, he um, he said it was good, except the ending was bullshit. He said that would never happen, killing all the bosses in one day. And then when he saw Godfather 2, he liked it too, but he didn't like the part where um, he, that Fredo got killed. He said that he, he should have just got chased. He shouldn't have killed his brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, growing up, Columbus Day was always, you know, a big day, day for Italian Americans. I mean, you know, we didn't we actually, we, you know, we ate special meals. Uh, like that day in like St. Joseph's Day were like big Italian holidays when I was a kid. Um, you know, the parade, we used to watch the parade on TV. Um, you know, it was just a day to be proud to be an Italian. Um, and then, of course, the Italian American League started, and that you know, the Columbus Day was the rally, which I didn't go to, as you know, everybody knows the story what happened um, to Joe Colombo that day. But yeah, it was just a day to be, you know, proud to be an Italian. Now today, you know, it's not definitely not the same anymore. It got very political and all that. But my father used to enjoy Columbus Day. We would go have a few drinks <laughs> to celebrate. Well, what happened was when the Sopranos came out, I was in federal prison. So I was in prison and the whole country is watching the show The Sopranos, but we had no access to it. So I would call up, you know, my family and my friends and they go, oh my God, you got to watch the show, The Sopranos. People were having Soprano parties on Sunday night when the new episodes came out. And like my friend Bobby used to tell me all the time, hey, it's crazy out here that people are having Soprano parties. And so, and I, and I never saw an episode. But when I came out of prison in 04, I have a friend of mine in London, a very good friend of mine in London named Chris that I met at a Narcotics Anonymous World Convention uh, in St. Louis in 95. And we remained friends to this day. We're still friends. He was still in contact. He visits me. Um, anyway, when I came home from, from prison, he sent me as a coming home present the box set of the DVDs of every season except the last season because it didn't come out yet the last season. And I, and I just been watched all of them. And uh, it was, I mean, actually it was really very realistic outside of him seeing a psychiatrist because in real life, there's no way that he would have got away with that. He would have got killed. There's no way that a boss or a captain uh, would have would have got away with seeing a psychiatrist. And I know that through my own personal experience because my father had a very, very dear friend of his name, Vito Guzzo, whose son is doing 30 something years I was good friends with his two sons, Vito and Anthony. He was a very, he was a wise guy with the Columbos and he was very good friends with my father. And he had a nervous breakdown, a um, legitimate nervous breakdown. Back then, nobody knew maybe he was bipolar. Who the fuck knows who was wrong with him? Because it was a different world back then in the 70s and, and the, 80, the early 80s. Um, there was no medications and all that like there is today. And he had a nervous breakdown and he got out of the hospital. And then about a year later, he had another nervous breakdown. And Junior Persico was the boss of the, uh, the Colombo family. And when he had the second nervous breakdown, he disappeared. So, you know, that's real life. That's the mafia. That's the mob, you know, not the Sopranos. Real life is that this guy had two nervous breakdowns and he disappeared off the face of the earth. You know what I mean? Because of that, because they got worried and Carmine had him, you know, clipped and that was the end of Vito. And then years later, his son actually got to, his son's in prison for, for murders. His son Vito actually, they told him who the guy was that killed his father and they let him kill the guy. The guy was an old man at the time and he disappeared. 
So, you know, and that, that's, that's the mafia. That's the mob, not the Sopranos. It's vicious. It's cold-blooded. That's the real mob. You know, the guy had a nervous breakdown, and, and, and instead of helping him and looking out for the guy, he disappeared. So let me ask you this. Yeah. So they, they, they tell him who killed his father, and then they let him go and kill this guy? Well, what happened was that they, what happened was he was a crazy kid, this kid Vito, and they had no, and he was doing a lot of work for them, and they were going to straighten him out. And 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 someone in that family told them who it was, which broke every rule there is to tell you. Not you're never supposed to do that in a million years. Like my father clipped the, my father clipped Carlo Gambino's cousin for Albert Anastasia and. Arneal was the only person besides my father that knew my father did it. The only, and Arneal never, ever said it was my father because Carl would have killed my father in a minute because Carl never even inquired about it, but it was my father. So yeah, he should have never known who it was. And, and that was because, because it's not like it was, you know, this is, this is how it is today. You know, this is how it was then, you know, um, when my father's time, that would have never happened in Vito's time. You know, they told him who the kid was because the kid was a big earner and someone whispered in his ear who did it. You know, and the guy that did it only took an order. You know, he was a wise guy. He did what he was told. He didn't deserve to die. I mean, even though it was Vito's father, I could identify it was his father, but that's the life. You know, that that's like my father always, my father told me a million times. He told me over and over and over again, if anything happens to me and I disappear or I get clipped, just forget about it. Don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. He said, just forget about it. You can't fight an army. He told me. He said, you can't fight an army. You could get one or two guys, but you got to go. You can't fight. Just forget about it. He said, because you, you just forget it. He goes, this is the light. So I watched it on HBO Max uh, the first day it came out Friday. I wasn't impressed. I, I, I wasn't a was very disappointing. Oh yeah, sure. I remember all the riots in the '60s. I, I you know, I, I, I was a, you know, a teenager in the '60s. I, you know, it was a very, very racial time. You know, in, in, in growing up, you know, when I was a kid, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, it was very, very racial.